Welcome to Money Talk, I'm Kim Parley. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We are going to get our heads in the cloud, cloud computing that is, as we just heard all the tech giants are trying to get the lead in the cloud space. Now a lot of us have heard of iCloud and Google Cloud, but do you really know how it works? Well, according to one survey, most Americans aren't as familiar with technology as one would think. In fact, half of Americans, 51%, believe that stormy weather interferes with cloud computing. That was taken a few years back, but I'm not sure if we understand the cloud any more then uh, than we do now. Here to bring the cloud back down to earth and explain how it all works is Ben Gossick. He's portfolio manager and global technology analyst at TD Asset Management. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me back. Okay, stormy weather. Does it interfere with cloud computing? Well, it doesn't interfere with cloud computing, but sometimes I wonder if my internet speeds slow down because it's raining or it's windy outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've been practicing that, haven't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually, I love the fact we're taking some time here to talk about this because, you know, I, I, I actually talk about this and say, oh, it's cloud computing, revenues are up because of, but you know, what is it, how does it work? And I think if people can understand what it is, they can start thinking about how to invest better around this. So that's really the purpose of what we're doing today. What is the cloud? So there's two ways to sort of answer that question. One is the origin of how we got the word cloud, mm -hmm. and the other is the business model that makes up the cloud. Uh, so going back to its origin, uh, when engineers were designing networks, so that's a collection of servers and printing devices and storage devices, uh, they'd get it down to the fine detail of all the wiring. But if there was a connected network, uh, they didn't want to define it, so they kind of drew a little bit of a bubble and that's how we got the word cloud. Really? So it's an external network. The business model that we see for the cloud, largely driven by Amazon, they had a, a bit of a resource problem. So they have all these engineers that are trying to design really interesting things, but they have a central office for IT. And so there was a, a lot of sort of friction between the two. So they decided to break their computing into little Lego blocks. Hmm. So if you take Lego blocks, you can build a spaceship, you can build a castle, it's all the same components. So if you take computing, you take storage, you let the engineers decide how to put that together rather than try to figure out what engineers needed to build their applications. Oh, interesting. So um, what would be some day-to-day -day examples then of actually how we would know it or you know, we use the cloud maybe without even knowing that we're using right. it? Right. So we're constantly touching the cloud. If you yeah. think, again, going back to that definition, yeah. a, a, a connected network outside of my home, uh, the internet could be one really big cloud. And then there's many, many uh, clouds that we touch on a day-to-day -day basis, be it Netflix, Office 365, Dropbox, Gmail. What's really amazing about the cloud is that let's say you left your home and you left an important file on your computer. It was kind of isolated to that home network. Yeah. And it was a, a frantic uh, you know, calling people to try to find a way to get that file to you. With the cloud, because it's external, you can access any file, any photo, any device, any time. It means you can watch shows on your phone, pick it up where you left off on your tablet. It provides that convenience. I love this next chart, um, and especially because uh, what it's titled. And, and I probably love the, the title more than I love the chart, but you're going to explain the chart. A once in a generation shift in IT architecture. This was a big deal to get things out from, you know, where they were, like you said, on your home computer, to just out where you can always access it. And this is going to happen once. Yeah, so we've kind of done this, uh, we've done this once, we're doing it, we're in the process of doing it now. Uh, the world is in this middle box with the dotted line. Yep. Uh, they term this the second platform. We got there from the mainframe, so in the 70s and 60s, they had these big, com uh, big computers that used to take up floors. When we got the PC, we moved to the second platform, and we unleashed a lot of productivity, we created applications, and we made professionals be able to be very productive with you know, millions of people using these applications. But now with smartphones, with tablets, with the internet of things, and many connected devices, uh, we need a new platform that's, that's being sort of uh, generated by the cloud. It's almost, you think of it, all the devices are just shells. You know, and then all the content comes from everywhere else. They just have to be able to read it, if you will. Kind of right, yeah. so now that, you know, instead of millions of people, Every person's got a smartphone, so now we're into billions of people. We're going to have billions of sensors out and around the world. We need an agile platform that can scale, that can take all that data that we want to analyze it, 
uh, and then make uh, business decisions based on that. I want to let people know that we're eventually going to get to the part of the conversation where I say, great, as an investor, how do you, how do you play this? And we're going to get there. Bear with me, though. Um, uh, I know my producer wanted me to ask you this. You've got a, a company, let's say, that makes customized dress shirts. Let's just say that's your company. Why do I care about the cloud? Okay, so if I was going to start a company that made customized dress shirts. Yeah, and I like your shirt, so I think it's a good start. Yeah, so I, I would say it's my own shirt that, that, that yeah. we made in this business. Um, I want to be able to grow. That means I need a lot of systems. I need to be able to accept orders. I need payment processing. I need a database of my customers. Uh, it's, this takes a lot of infrastructure to support all that. So I may be able to raise some money, but a lot of that money is then going to be paid for hardware and for professionals to run all that infrastructure for me. Uh, when we're moving into the cloud, uh, I can save a lot of money because I'm going to be outsourcing it to someone else. I think we have a, a chart that sort of shows let's the, bring it the up. shift. Okay, let's see. So this is IT infrastructure in a cloud world. Let's let's take a look at this one. Um, I, I guess one of those things too, it just seems to get rid of a lot of fixed costs in the system for a lot of these businesses that are starting up. Right, so all this capital would have been capital expenditure. So and when we go back to the Amazon example where they broke up computing into Lego boxes, you can think of these stacks as different Lego pieces of computing. So in, uh, in, our, uh, in our dress shirt example, we're going to be on the far left-hand column. As the owner of the business, I'm responsible for all these layers of computing. And I need to find the right hardware and all the professionals to deal with that. Um, but I'm in the business of selling shirts. Uh, so with the cloud, I can outsource a lot of that infrastructure to someone else. So um, now you can see with the yellow Lego blocks, those, that's the part that will be owned by a cloud provider. So there's three different flavors of the cloud. There's infrastructure, there's platform, and there's software. And you can see with software, it's all yellow blocks. That means I don't need to worry about anything. I'm getting an application run by a sophisticated cloud vendor, and I can run it off my app or off my browser. So in a way, what the cloud has done is it's democratized IT. So you know, I can be a small business owner, and I can get very sophisticated software that would have been only available to people with deep pockets. For a price, and that's what we're going to talk about, right? Because you're paying for the service, and then the companies that run it get the revenues. And that's what we're going to be talking about when we get back. We're talking with Ben Goss. Like we're talking cloud computing, and we're taking a look at the investing perspective on cloud computing right after this. We're back with Ben Gossick from TD Asset Management. We're talking the cloud. He just talked to us about all the kinds of services that are available to people in the cloud, the Lego locks, as it were, that people can buy, or not buy, rent, if you want. or get As a service. As a service, yes. Is it too early for investors to get returns from the cloud computing space? We're still in the early innings. So Amazon started their first services to the public in 2006. So if you think about it, we're 10 years in. Uh, but enterprises have been very slow to shift their workloads to the cloud. So the data that we have is that 20% of applications for companies like Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, GE have moved to the cloud. So that means 80% is still happening on their premises. Uh, so there's still a ways to go. There's still a lot of uncertainty as to who will be the winners, who will be the losers. Yeah, but having said that, there's still some plays that you like right now. Now, why don't you yes. explain why? So um, who would you pick as, as winners in, in, in the cloud space so far? So if we, if we look at information technology, we break it up into subsectors. So we have software, we have hardware, we have services. Mm -hmm. We think the cloud provides a big opportunity for the cloud vendors. Uh, if you think about Microsoft Office, if I was a company to buy it, it's probably 20% of my total cost to actually operate it. So mm -hmm. I need to, again, I need hardware, I need people to manage it. So if I'm offsetting that off to Microsoft and take it in as a service, uh, in theory, my total cost of ownership has fallen. So I'm happy as a customer, but Microsoft is taking on that burden. And so in theory, they could charge more for that subscription. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think it's a huge addressable market that grows for the software companies. We think that benefits companies like a Microsoft or an Oracle. Now, let's talk a bit more about Oracle. I mean, you used Microsoft as an example. How does Oracle benefit in the same way? The same thing, they do a lot yeah. of applications, they're able then to serve that over the internet. Uh, a lot of um, Oracle is known as sort of the Cadillac as databases. So again, for a lot of up and 
up and coming companies that couldn't afford that Oracle database in the cloud. It's a model that small and medium enterprises can now get that sophisticated software that they would have been priced out of before. What about Amazon? I mean, we hear you know we hear cloud and we hear Amazon um, you know together quite a bit in terms of who uses it, but also who's providing those services. I know too that the web services I believe to a lot right. of small companies. So well, how does that work? I mean, we like Amazon right now. I'd say they're the distant leader in the cloud, followed oh, really? by Microsoft and yeah. by Google. Uh, so we like it for its disruptive e-commerce, for its prime delivery services, for video, especially. Uh, it's Amazon Web Services. So what we're looking for that company, they, they own that infrastructure space, uh, which is all the sort of the hardware and the servers. And so we're, we're trying to watch and see how they move up the stack. Uh, and that could be disruptive for other players. Last one here, a name you've got, um, ticker symbol EQIX on, on the NASDAQ. And this is a data center? It's a data center. It's, it's called Equinix. And what we like about it is that you know we're trying to figure out who wins, who loses. Um, but we also have to think about how companies will connect to their cloud providers. So they may use Salesforce.com uh, for their customer relationship management tools. They may use Microsoft for Office 365. Uh, Equinix is kind of like the Switzerland of data centers, really? so they don't belong to an Amazon or a Verizon or a Bell. It's a place where everyone can put their servers in there, and then the customer can then run a line from their server to whoever is providing them the cloud. We think that's the most efficient way to get your services. Is this like a massive server farm? Is that what I'm you know, visualizing? Right. Or, yeah. I kind of think of it as a, a storage unit center, a mall. So if I'm doing back to school shopping, it's one stop shopping. I can do everything in one spot. Um, I, I, an example would be, let's say you want to do a stock trade on your phone. You're going to need many different parties. You're going to need Bell for your network. Yeah. You're going to need TD Waterhouse for your brokerage. You're going to need the, the stock exchange, several other players. If it's all happening within the data center, it can be very efficient in terms of ordering that, uh, routing that order that you put in your phone. Interesting. Um, who's going to lose as the cloud gets bigger? So if the customer is happy because they're spending less and the software players can make more money, we think that comes at the expense of hardware vendors and select IT service companies. So now there's less enterprise customers for the hardware companies, and you've concentrated negotiating power to the Googles and the Amazons and the IBMs. So it, we're not surprised that we see really big transactions like Dell and EMC combining. They're going to have to do that. And then anyone that was supporting the on-premise environment, implementing large applications like S. SAP, uh, that business is also uh, suffering right now. Ben, always great to have you. You're a great primer. Thanks so much. Thank you. Ben Gossick, Portfolio Manager and Global Techn Technology Analyst with TD Asset Management.